Christmas. This is the Tech, the Lego X. Oh, hang on one second. Hello? Wait a minute, Joey. Remember? You can't say that. We changed it. Oh yeah, I forgot. Alright, thanks for the reminder. Alright, sorry for any confusion. Hello everyone, and Merry Christmas. This is the Tech Next Podcast. Today we're going to take a look at the new Technique sets that just came out in the LEGO shop. We will also take, at the, take a look at the new sets that are going to be coming later in 2012. We will also talk with Andy Maluzzi who is the shuttle project builder and the NXTG block for the RS485 function for the NXT brick. We will also look at the new sensors from Mind Sensors, High Technic, and Dexter Industries. Well, I hope you enjoy this edition of the Tech Next podcast. All right, now we're going to talk about the new technique sets that just came out in the shop at home. Uh, there are six of them that just came out. The 9390 Mini Tow Truck is the smallest of the six. But in this case, small does not always mean the worst. It packs a uh, steering function and you can play with the winch. Uh, it is one of the smallest technique sets that does not use a uh, worm gear and eight tooth gear mechanism. Its B model is an F1 race car. Uh, it just has one uh, uh, basic steering function. The 9391 Mini Crane uh, is the second model for the lineup. It has an extendable boom and hook, and also has the mini, the new mini turntable, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. The B model for this is a bulldozer that is very similar to the 8275 motorized bulldozer that just came out a few years ago. Uh, with a front blade and a rear uh, rear ripper, it is good for any LEGO fan. The 9392 quad bike is personally my favorite in the lineup. Uh, I really like it because of the colors and it has a lot of really cool features in sense of colors and cool tires. It also has a fa the famous LEGO moving piston engine and some shock absorbers. A buggy is the B model for this. It has basically the same features but a different look. Um, also, from what I recall, it is the only set with chain links wrapped completely around the, the entire uh, gear. The 9394 jet plane is up next. It is interesting in the sense that uh, it looks kind of funny. The nose, some people say, that is too long. Looks too much like a helicopter nose. Um, I tend to agree, but I just kind of look past that and just look at the features and it looks pretty cool. The B model for this is also pretty cool. It is a prop plane. It looks the same except it has a propeller in the front. Uh, it also has a few, uh, it has fewer features than the jet plane, which makes it a slightly uh, smaller model. The 9395 pickup tow truck is a cousin to the tow truck from about 2006. Uh, it has some great panels and colors that I really like. Its functions include a rear tow fork and a great winch. The B model for this is a cool looking to uh, truck that is basically a loading truck. Um, it, it, from the looks of it, it basically uses the fork on the side of it to pick up shipping containers and, and transport them to different places. I've always wanted to see one of these in real life. I've never seen one before, so I've always wanted to see one in real life. The 9397 logging truck is the flagship for this. It is the big one in the sense that it is the largest of the six. Uh, it packs the new mini turntable, which we'll talk into in just a sec. Uh, it's got some really cool wheels, uh, functioning claw and arm, some linear actuators. It also does have an M-sized power functions motor to motorize the, the contraption without needing to buy an extra set. Uh, it also has a red changeover switch to change from rotating arm to articulating the arm. Uh, the B model for this is still unknown from what I recall but the mini turntable is the uh, spotlight for this whole lineup. It is a 28 tooth gear with a pair of perpendicular pinholes on both sides. 
It has a pinhole right, it has a hole right in the middle that'll fit four pneumatic hoses. And it, it, it's a really cool uh, new piece that I'm really excited for. Next up, we'll take a look at the new sets uh, that, are, that are coming soon in later 2012. The new 2012 Summer Technique sets are coming up pretty soon. The 9396 Heavy Lift Helicopter, in my opinion, is, looks really cool, but uh, the color scheme is a little off in my opinion. Um, it's also a little too bulky, but it looks really cool in the sense that it's got a lot of cool features to use. Um, the 9398 RC Off-Roader is a great set in the sense that it has a power functions motor, so you don't have to buy a whole nother set. Uh, it's got a big tires, a cool cam, cool colors, and an awesome suspension. Next we're going to take, take a look at some new sets that are just a little more cinematic. pretty cool. Next up we're going to talk about the new NXT sensors that are going to be coming out uh, for High Technic, Dexter Industries, and Mind Sensors. High Technic hasn't really brought out a whole new bunch of sensors, but they have released the uh, Rotocaster 2-pack. Um, they also released the NXT Super Pro prototyping board for hardware enthusiasts. Dexter Industries has been pretty busy lately. They have just released their Wi-Fi sensor, capable of connecting to a Wi-Fi network. One main example of the sensor is a remote control through the internet. Another great sensor they have recently uh, released is the DIMU. IMU stands for Inertial Motion Sensor. It is a gyro sensor and accelerometer combined into one package. So far people have mainly used it to make Segway robots. Mind Sensor's latest sensor is the Touch Sensor Panel. Oh, sorry, the Touch Panel. Uh, used for touch screen uh, projects that you can use with your NXT, such as drawing, a calculator, someone built, and a uh, noise machine. Mind Sensors has also updated some of their older sensors, such as the NXT Cam version 4, the Sumo Eyes version 2, and the three ranges for the infrared se distance sensors, all up to version 3 with just a shorter design. Coming up, an interview with Andy Maluzzi. The next V and the NXT GR35 blocks really came out of the uh, space shuttle, um, the League of Mines and Space Shuttle. I needed a way to communicate at a high speed between the different uh, bricks, and there was no way to do it from lab view or from NXTG. So by uh, working with John Hansen to figure out how the firmware uh, handles high speed communication, I was able to uh, make my own personal calls into the IO map blocks uh, in the firmware that actually permit that communication. And I then decided that since I had done all the hard work already, I was able to expose um, that very same technology into an NXTG block, which is now being downloaded and used by LEGO fans all over the world. I didn't have any specific robots in mind uh, when I made the NXTG blocks, uh, besides the LEGO Mines and Space Shuttle, but I'm actually right now inside our robotics lab here at Rose Holman, and uh, I'm right by our entry into the Intelligent Ground Vehicle Competition. And what's really cool is by using the RS-45 block, I can actually make my NXT talk to that robot and actually uh, control some of the interaction. So while nothing was really set in stone from the start, uh, it has given me some cool applications to play around with. I can also make it talk to uh, the Compact Rio, which is used in the uh, first robotics competition. 
Um, so a whole bunch of new opportunities. The Lego Mindstorm Space Shell Project really was a team effort um, by John Brose, Mark Andre, Bazzighetti, and myself. Uh, all three of us are at Lego Mindstorm's community partners, and we have a great uh, passion uh, for the Space Shell program. And we all wanted to give back. Um, Mark built an amazing robotic arm. The real challenge is that the one on the space shell doesn't have to work in gravity, but ours does. So how do you get around uh, providing that power to actually move the arm up and down? John Brose made the thing able to rock back and forth like 45 degrees. And don't tell him I said that, because he thinks it's only running at about 20 degrees. Um, but just that ability to engineer something, it was way beyond what one person could do. I mean, I mainly did the orbiter uh, itself and making the doors open and all that kind of cool stuff. But those two are really the masterminds about bringing the shuttle to life. Hey Joey, can you ask him why he just now started a blog? It took him long enough. Well, Xander has been bugging me for ages, because he's usually the first person I went to to uh, actually start a blog, and thanks Xander for giving me a hard time. Um, but I wanted to actually share my projects and share what's going on in the LEGO Mindstorms community with other people. Um, as you know, I do a lot more than just LEGO robots, but I love LEGO robotics, and that is kind of my one passion. Um, and reaching out to other people, showing them off, promoting events, all that kind of cool stuff. And what my own blog does is it gives me that outlet to share these cool ideas, these cool projects that I do for LEGO, for National Instruments, for Texas Instruments, um, Intel, all these kinds of companies, and give them a, an outlet to see what I'm kind of working on in my spare time. Because, uh, I am very much a nerd, but it's a lot of fun. I actually have quite a few projects in the work, um, a couple more LEGO Mindstorms projects, uh, and a couple here at school. I have a really cool project I'm working on, integrating a robotic arm on a mobile platform, uh, as well as a few other uh, different uh, nifty ideas that I'm hoping to bring to life here. Um, I'm also doing some Embed Linux on the Beagle and Panda boards made by Texas Instruments. Um, they're open source boards, they're really, really cool, they can be used a lot in robotics, they're a uh, pretty powerful platform. So a whole bunch of stuff. But uh, it was great talking to you, Joey. Uh, I gotta go. Uh, we're kind of busy over here, so I'll catch you later. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this podcast. I appreciate you watching everything I do. And uh, I work really hard to do all these podcasts with the help of a bunch of family and friends. Um, I would appreciate some comments or suggestions, especially on things I did well, <laughs> in the comment section, in the YouTube or the blog posts. Um, I would like to thank Technique Bricks for staying so up to date with all the latest technique sets that just came out. I would also like to thank LEGO Talk for uh, the new 2012 sets for, um, from YouTube user LEGO Picture HQ. I would also like to thank Andy Maluzzi for letting me interview. See you next time on the Tech Next Podcast.